Alright, welcome back everybody. So, uh, today we're going to be working on the Moth project again, so don't mind me just holding up. And then go to Morphok, which is that one. <coughs> and today we're going to be actually designing the uh, big giant tree. So, just you know. I'm going to be working on that boy. So, uh, yeah. I hope everybody's going to be enjoying that. Just one sec. There you go. And then one more, and then we are ready to go, whatever we need to do in the first place. Now, Alphawk is getting already there. Pretty much good, good to go. So hard to look at this when you know you don't have the. There you go, full screen. Alright, now I can switch properly. <laughs> so today we're gonna be working on this bad boy over here, this uh, tree. And we're going to be making sure that our tree is looking nice. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, we need to switch to the old-fashioned uh, pencil draw or drawing pencil. Pencil number two. And I believe we need to go to 3.6. Yes, tiny. And then we can we can do this. All right. So first, we need to have this thing on transparent and we can now work on this like so and now we can start drawing um so today we're gonna be working on this I'm gonna take my sweet ass time to draw this so let's start right here and then you know work our way up because that's how we should do it in the first place so we have this lovely drawing, uh, this lovely line right here, and, well, this is a big tree. So yes, it should have, like, big strokes around it. But, it should also have tiny ones going underneath it and above it. So yeah. We're going to just casually draw over here, and then we're going to be drawing more wood in it. That's the idea. There you go. Now we can start drawing on this big time. As you can already see what I mean with this. So we have this bark skin that needs to be all around this. Technically bark skin should be, you know, um, independent from most places, but I just want to make sure that this thing is a little bit more connected. And we're moving up towards the other parts with it. There you go. Now that's looking already a lot more better than what we had before. Even though, you know, we're just getting started on this. The main idea that we're here, the main thing that we are doing here is actually quite easily. Uh, we're improving upon the drawing. We're implementing the um, lines that we have and then, you know, move on with the rest of it. By creating this kind of feeling of wood inside of it, and then, you know, using the colors to represent even more. That will actually uh, create this cool looking effect that we right now have. Which we're going to be improving even more. Because, you know, we can do that. And that's exactly what we need to do. And this is always lovely to see, you know, that, you know, wood and all the other types of environmental effects on textures textures are important 
first you need to figure out like the form of it and then you know you if you add then the textures towards the form then well the form comes alive and the more alive it comes the better it gets at it oh hey blue nice to see you as well nice uh, nice nice seeing you around yeah but uh, yeah, the more the more I work on this, the better it gets, and uh, you can already see like bluff, we have come a long way. And now the only thing we now need to do is actually uh, give the background a little bit of a cool-looking effect, and then most of it. And then once the background is drawn, then well, it's all good to go because then the only thing that needs to be done is shading and lighting, which is quite easily done in most cases. And I'm very happy that, you know, my uh, t-shirt design actually worked out quite great. Even though I have not recorded it. Well, I did record only the beginning of it, but the end, I didn't. But I put a thumbnail on it, so that way, you know, you can see the end result anyway. I think that's fine enough. But yeah, as I said before, sometimes, you know, it's, it's very important that, you know, to do things. And uh, with the... With, for instance, with the uh, little uh, crocodile drawing I did last uh, yesterday, I couldn't figure out certain types of things, and then I came to the right solution of, you know, like, why don't roll with it? You know, the, the tail is behind it, so why not roll with it? And um, I had to design some types, types of things, because, you know, the organization I went on holiday with, um, they normally use a globe with a, 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 with a K-Man on it. That's why the crocodile is there, and well, I made a, I made a call of you know that you know, I don't like I don't like nasi without without meat. So that's the whole that's the whole joke about it. And it's quite fun to see that you know such things go, and then you know the end result of it 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 creates so much more, so much more fun when you, once you see the end result coming in. Because I thought, like, well, you know, how can I get this thing more looking like, you know, the flame bird and all that stuff? And then I realized, like, well, if I just add this and add that and add this, then yes, it will work. Of course, you know, it is not the same. It is the same art style, but it's not the same uh, layout. Because I wanted to make it a little bit more different. Yeah, probably different. And the first thing I actually did correctly do the layout a little bit different which actually worked quite well yeah wow that's comes really far yep yep that's the mallfuck for you that's that's the mallfuck it is like uh -huh. it's a big project but you know step by step it works quite well and the more the more i work on it the better i get at it and that's the whole that's the whole main idea same with the boat project. It is like a big project that works well, and then you know eventually you know you get from point A to point B, and then you come to point C and B like, ah, uh, well this is all, this is old, and then you realize like, ah, well I did this wrong, I did that wrong, and with the Marfa project, yes, I did some things, re I did some stuff really wrong with this with this drawing, which I should have done really much better, like. I already did the cleaning up, but technically I should not have done the clean. I didn't have the need to do the cleaning up. But so far, you know, I'm very happy upon the result. How far is already cooking, and I'm very happy upon that, because you know, I'm already trying to do my very best upon achieving how far I got things. And the more I do, the better I get at it. The more I do, the better I get at it. The better stuff like this actually work well now to say the le say say the least that this is actually quite good the amount of um the amount of tree the amount of the tree that needs to be you know detailed is quite big because you know we need to have a big giant tree we don't we don't go for a tiny tree with a tiny house no no no, no. these are big giant trees that's supposed to be in the forest so they're big stubborn, tough, wood-looking like structures, which, you know, that's why I'm trying to draw as many details as possible into this tree. If you know, you know, most most of this tree might not have enough detail to 
um, uh, be interesting to look at. That's why you need to create interesting points into the drawing to, you know, create an interesting to make it interesting. Like for instance, with the Malfalk already, I have some interesting points which are eye catchers. Not most of them are fully eye catchers, but they are eye catchers nonetheless. Like for instance, the crystals in the ground here. They are eye catchers. They are like they are different from the texture that is around them, and they are they are you know. They are friendly towards the environment. They are indeed the environment that needs to be done. So these big giant rocks, they, they take up a lot of space, which is important because that space is now rightfully owned, is actually making sure that I don't have to draw more. It's not lazy, it's more like, you know, it fits in with the environment and it creates this cool looking effect that I can multiply if I really want to so I can put like more crystals onto the ground so I can put some crystals here and there to represent more crystals that they are all around this forest laying around which I probably will do you know put some more crystals down but I want to first focus on the big giant picture here that is like you know the big giant tree but I can technically put crystals around here like you know put a crystal right here and then have a tree, you know, do the same thing as the other trees that did, and then put it upwards. But of course, you know, that's that will be all done later on. The main thing that we now need to focus on is getting this tree up and running, because that's important. If we don't have this tree up and running well, you know, things are gonna go not as nice as they uh, as you think they will go, because this tree, yeah, as many other trees right here is one of those big chungus trees that needs to be you know move up into the world so i need to make sure that this tree looks big feels big and feels like a tree and that creates a lot of texture that i need to draw that's why you know i'm using that's why i'm using the small pens uh, that's why i'm using the 3.6 pixels instead of the 5 pixels because you know we don't want to uh, we don't want to end up with a far too sharp corner, which is true. So as you can see, we have like these rocks right here. These are representable rocks. These are decent rocks. They are decently drawn. That's good. They represent the rocks that are like so. And then I can put some more crystals right here if I want to. So yeah, it's it's all it all it's all connected. It just you know needs time to be connected. I think you know all of this. All of this stuff will probably make a lot of hand, handy work going on. And the funny thing is, actually, um, the funny thing is, actually, once the um, uh, blech, the funny thing is that once I'm done with the whole drawing, then this thing will might look way different than before because you know it has more you know stuff in it. But the good news is, like all of this, all all these, all all of this drawing um, creates a lot more special uh, specialty because I'm actually doing the coloring, I'm doing the lighting, I'm doing the drawing, I'm doing everything myself. Which means that technically, because I'm doing everything myself, I'm actually not fully specialized in everything. Yes, true, I'm not fully specialized in everything. I'm more specialized in drawing than in coloring most of the times, but I need to learn how to do the coloring because, you know, it's not like I can, it's not like I can ask someone to do it for me because then I will feel like, yeah, but then it will not feel, and it's like a personal reason. Like, I like to accomplish the things myself and I want to proceed upon improving myself. Therefore, I need to learn them all so that, you know, I can master them all. And if I can master them all, then, well, you know, I will be the master and then you know one day you know I can just do all of them at at once but well technically that's impossible but you you get the point if I'm just working on this then well most of this will be just fine I will be better at it I will get I will get better I will get better um I will get more stuff uh done if I'm just improving upon all of this all of this drawing stuff. That's why I'm actually doing this. I want to just improve upon it and get better at it. 
and the more better I get at it, the more better the drawings will be, the more better I will be at drawing. Because right now I'm actually improving upon my own drawings. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it is indeed improving. Whether I like it or not, it's improving, which I'm actually very happy upon. The only downside is it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to do so, to improve. But it's a, it's a welcome, it's a very good welcome. So now that we've done that part, we actually now need to get this down part up towards upwards, otherwise we won't be able to do it. And I need to do this in multiple, I need to do this in multiple parts at the same time. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Ah, spinning heads are not good. Spinning heads are the worst case scenario of being totally disturbed. Yep. It's not. It's not very. It's not normal that you know my head is spinning. But well, technically it's normal for me, but it's not normal for normal people. It just means that I'm gonna have a lot of trouble, you know, keeping up with all the talking and drawing at the same time because I'm trying to do both at the same time while well, giving commentary towards my own drawing and telling you that well. It might look pretty, but it's not perfect. Far from it, because it's not done yet. If it is done, I would tell you. <laughs> and I will show you. Because I can. Because, you know, that's how this draw this is how this drawing streams normally work, you know. Just just you know, you work on something and then once you're finished you're gonna show off the work sometimes. Or you just show you show stuff that are actually important. Like I will show you I will show you guys the uh the uh, how do you say the late the once once it's like almost time I will show you the uh, end result of the uh, crocodile because you know I uh, I can explain stuff to it like why and how and what I did with it and how I do did, did it because you know Malfog is indeed a very big project and you know you always need to have some distances between it otherwise you're gonna be drawing drawing yourself insane which is important you always need to take breaks Gentle breaks, not big breaks, gentle breaks. Like five minute breaks or, you know, half a day break, but not like two or six or eight or nine or ten break days. I did that because I had other reasons for it. Of course, you know, doing that, it didn't change anything. Yes, it didn't change anything, but it did put me to a test of like, Oh, what kind of brush did I use again? Or what kind of technique did I use to draw this? And then, you know, you need to look back. The good news is, I have videos of myself being recording doing that. So I could just watch it back, see like, oh, well, this, 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 and then remember it. Of course, I'm not that fast with, you know, knowing that I could do that. But, you know, I have the things to do it. Because that's how, th this is why I always record normally, you know, I just record these drawings because I want to show people what I draw and how I draw things and um, how I am trying to get improve, how to improve myself upon these drawings. And you can already see the improvement because of the amount of layers that have been reduced. Because there have been now, all these big giant layers of the bird are now reduced to one. And why did I do that? Because, well, I'm working on the background and I don't want to have a 58, I don't want to have a 15, uh, how do you say, a 15, uh, a 15 layer, uh, 15 gig of uh, drawing <laughs> be in the way. <laughs> so yeah, I'm now working on this big giant tree. And the more I work on it, the better it gets, of course, but... You know me. I'm I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be the very best, like no one ever was. So I'm trying to be very good at it. Of course, you know this tree already. This tree already possesses a lot of trouble, which you probably not see right now. But it does create a lot of issues that I'm always dealing with. One of these issues is how to draw the uh, bark skin. The main the main issue I have with this box skin is that it's so uh, that I need to uh, always have lines in it. So if I have a line overlapping, well, congratulations, those lines need to split into new lines. But of course, I don't want to I don't want them to be split all the time. I want them to split sometimes. The main issue with that is that well, you know, that will create some kind of vein issue that will create that, uh, the type of vein texture that I don't want. 
because you know I want to create the uh, tree texture and not the um, muscle tissue texture that you know is like very distinct. Of course, you know that it all comes it all comes in together in the end, but it would be better if I'm not able to draw that kind of texture on it and just straight went to the texture that I want. But I can't because that's how this tree works. This this tree is like too big to um, be able to avoid those textures. So it's like a little bit of ming uh, it's like a mingle ma um, it's like a messy soup that you know needs some straight up uh, lining to create a better looking on that kind of subject. Of course, you know, it's it's not really that much of an importance. It's just, you know, that this tree does possess some kind of um, issues that I want to uh, resolve before I can go. And to do so, I need to make sure that I do... Oop. And to do so, I need to make sure that I do it correctly. Now, there you go. Much, much, much better. So now, as you can see, that is a tree. But we need to make sure that that tree does keep on being the tree that we want. So we have this uh, line right here, which we need to extract towards that part upwards. And so we need to draw like tiny bits right here. And then we have this hollow part that can be drawn in. There you go. Wow. Hello, hello, F F weed uh, gamer. <laughs> Lol, yeah, video records are helpful. Yeah, duh. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that is indeed a thing. And uh, the more I do this, the better I get it. At it, and the more I, uh, the more better I get at this, the better you know the drawings will be. The main issue that I'm now having is like, well, you know, coloring. That is like one one of my problems that I have, and the uh, lighting. And to get better at that, that's why you have those lovely things that are called, you know, the other drawings, because um, the story of awesomeness has these uh, magical girls that you know I need to draw. These highlights, these hairs, those are very challenging for me. It's like, ooh. Something new, something special, and then you know I need to figure out how to how the hell do I get to what's that part? Or how do I get to towards that um, uh, look on the drawing, and how do I get from point A to point B? I don't have any guidance. I don't have any things. I only have you know the manual of like hey uh, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, and good luck figuring out how to do it. Of course, I'm not, you know, draw. I'm of course not going to be trying to do, uh, trying to get myself uh, hitting silly with all these solutions that might not, you know, be there. But I will be able to. Um, I can do that. Yes, I can. It's on that tree to give something variety. Uh, I can. All right, I will. But I don't need to do it right here, right now, because I already have this part right here that is representing that. All right. Um, but yeah, all of these new things, all these new handlings that I need to learn. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. They are really hard and really tough to do. But I'm doing it, and that's what counts. That's what counts. I am really, really happy upon what I do. And I know and I realize that the delay on this stream is like 10 seconds. Oh, well, no problems there because that actually would create good quality, but it's still 10 seconds, which means it's one minute delay in the live stream. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, this is always why I'm like super, super duper late. It's like, yeah, lat latency of this is like very. Nah, it's a live chat, but. <laughs> Don't mind me just reacting way too late on uh, people's uh, responses because that's that's normally how uh, th these streams work. Because I am terrible at uh, 
you, if you noticed um, at fixing stuff like systems and all that stuff, I am not good at uh, realizing like, ah, well, I need to do this, or ah, well, I need to do that, and then I realize like, ah, yes, I forgot this, or I forgot that. Oh, look at that, I can do this, lovely. I can add that to what's here, and then, oh, yes, there you go. Stupid bark. Finally, get some nice looking bark into there. Now we have this bark, and this bark actually works well. Nice. Now we just need to get this thing a little bit more. There you go. Now we need to get this running towards here there you go and now we actually have the uh, idea of how this tree is working oh hey space jump zoom out i want to see ah fine i'll show you the full full picture then eh. the full picture the full full there you go this is how it looks zoomed out all right this is how it looks zoomed out a little bit closer to home and then that is the maximum zoom out if i'm correct so as you can see the texture on the on the, on the tree is already looking quite uh, quite good uh, because um you can already see how much texture there is on this tree that is going to be extending from here two rods here to the top up, uh, upper part before i stop with the uh, grass and all that stuff so I believe if we then, you know, add all the stuff that we want, then that actually works quite well. <clears throat> and, um, let me see how much time we already have. Oh, half an hour already, and dang it. That's a lot. But yeah, as you can see, uh, we're trying to draw this texture, and, uh, we real and I realized, like, oh, well, that's a lot of texture that we need to draw. Yes. Because this is one part, and we're one hour in, or oh, well, half an hour in, so one half an hour, another half an hour, and this is one hour, around one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six, probably seven. So this whole tree will be probably taking seven hours or eight hours of work. And why is that? Because we actually need to do design and redesign some stuff, and we need to do design the way of how the how how all this wood works. So the texture on uh, you know giving this wood a lively uh, a lively strokes. So we have this tree, we have a branch. This branch is gonna be like this. Well, this is the root part. This is the bottom part of the tree ish so it's like tough uh, trough bark and this is how you do it you just draw and draw and gonna get towards the parts that you need of course you know this is all gonna be very problematic because we are working with uh, a lot of tree issues so I have like this effect And all of this is all, you know, handily drawn, which is, ugh, takes for ages. But it does create a good effect. That's why I'm always doing it. And, um, yeah. Ugh. This is a little bit too confusing. I cannot work around that. I need to work around such a way. Yes, thank you. And if I'm correct, I also need to grab... Uh, I also need to have a t uh, another washing, um, a little blankie to fix all this uh, smear on it because you know my my hands are a little bit f uh, fat, uh, a little bit full of fat, which or grease. There you are. there you go, grease. The grease on my hands is a little bit too much. The good news is that this actually works well. Nice. So.
Now, a quick question is like, how do I get from point A to point B? Of course, we don't want to put too much attention on those sides, otherwise things will get messy. And there you go. The main issue here is that we are trying to get some texture into the uh, tree without any, pro uh, well, creating some shaping into the tree by using the textures. So it's like a big, 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 big uh, round tree instead of, you know, a square or flat one that is just drawn on the background. Of course, I want this tree to be there because, you know, that's my whole idea. I want this tree to be there. There is there is a reason why I drew this tree. The reason is that it, uh, because of the tree, it's gonna be looking like it is like um, a family shield. Um, once the whole background is up and running, it's like a family shield that is gonna be a fact. So the bird is gonna be in the in the middle, and then you know there is a sort a short a sort of uh, all of shaping going on afterwards. Anyway, uh, boop, bleh, bleh, bleh. anyway, let, let's continue with the drawing, the actual actual drawing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I feel like I'm actually doing quite well with this thing, and how far I got with it already. I got a long way. I got a long way with this, and uh, it's looking nice. It's looking great. Looking beautiful. You know, it's not not your ordinary, easy, quite easily done drawing. No, 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 no. This is like you know, if you want to have patience, if you if you have patience, then well, congratulations, you will be able to make this. If you don't have patience or you're too impatient to do so, then well, good luck. Try not to get insane, because that's how this drawing works. Of course, there might be quicker ways of doing this, like using a stamp, for instance. That actually works, but eh, I don't find I find stamps <laughs> found stamps a little bit uh, not my uh, my taste. Why is that? Because you know you need to have the feel. Of, you need to know how, uh, if you don't know how textures work. And you uh, just use stamps to create the texture, and then you know the stamp doesn't add up to your desires, which most likely will, you know, because that's how stamp works. And they only have one use. And the texture doesn't work, then well, you know, you're gonna be like, ah, oh, well, and now what? How how do I get that stamp? How do I get that? And then probably you will be, you know, quitting already before you were able to do anything about it, which is a thing that can happen. Honestly, that happened with me before. When I used the stamp, I was like, well, and now what? I, I cannot use this stamp because it doesn't desire what I want. So I decided to learn how to draw the strokes upon how to create the effects of the stamp without, with my hands. And of course that takes a lot more time because, you know, you want to uh, create the effect, but because everything is handily drawn and everything is handily done, it's far more better with the floating and there are less errors in it. So I can just follow up this effect right here, I can follow it up, but I can make changes into it. So it's not all the same texture, it's not all the same effects. Well, it has the same effect, but it's not the same texture that I'm using. This creates this um, um, this creates the eye-catching part of it, because every texture in this drawing is not always because every single part of the strokes that I drew are not the same, or not every single stone is the same. It um, creates this uh, effect of you know being like oh well since that everything not everything is the same then well not everything is gonna be the same later on. Also, it creates a nicer effect honestly. 
because not everything is the same, things things gonna be standing out. I'm gonna be drawing until this part right here and leave this part to be done later. So I'm gonna be only drawing right here. Because I'm not I'm not trustworthy of myself right now of how far I can push this without screwing it over. Because technically I need some I need some uh, I need some sweet ass uh, color to get this uh, get this beast up and running. So yeah, uh, do 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 do. Forty five minutes, that's good enough. Thirty five minutes, that's good enough. So yeah, once we're done with that, we can then see if we then add some color towards this, then we can see like how this all implements. So we're going to be drawing it, then coloring it a little bit, and then going upwards. Because we want to know how this texture affects the color, the coloring of the drawing and the effects on the drawing. Of course, you know, to make sure that that is a thing, I can just put this off if I want to, but I'm, uh, but I rather not because then I can see like where the strokes are need to be, or how, uh, how this effect is gonna be going. Now, um, where was I? Oh yes, I was at the part where I'm just gonna be very, very talking about anything else than the morpho probably, and just t was talking about how I draw. Yeah, actually that what was I actually doing. So, um, don't get me wrong, I uh, I have been doing today, I have actually been working on drawing already, like, I believe, three hours in, a, in one go, but because I was drawing for three hours in one go, I actually worked really well. The main downside is that that is actually very bad because you know you're not supposed to work like three hours in one go. You need to take breaks all the time, which I didn't do. But the good news is I actually quit it before I re uh, because I realized like oh well um, I still need to be able to draw tonight, so to quit it. But I finished the drawing anyway, and I came to the realization I am now able to draw the. Um, lens ish, yeah, lenses. Yeah, I drew myself a lens effect. I drew myself a glass lens effect. So, like something like you look through a, tel a telescope, like an old-fashioned telescope, so a dusty one, which is quite cool, you know, because you're now able to do that. Um, because I'm able to do that, I was able to. Keep the style that I had before, and then you know use that style to improve upon the drawing. Um, so there you go. Almost there. We're just gonna put in a base color in it to see where and how much more uh, to uh, bigger or how much more of the or well, how much. I need to draw. So we're just gonna be doing this and then hopefully, you know, once we have the color in, we can then see like where do we need to put some more detail on it and where do we not supposed to put more detail on it because that's important. You don't want to you don't want you don't want these trees to be all the same. So now we're gonna put some color in. So we're gonna pick the color, the base color is Where's the base color be? Uh, the base color was this one right here. Thank you. Thank you, base color. And we're gonna be adding that towards our collection. So we're gonna go here and put a big giant coloring on. Of course, we need to put it downwards. We're not idiots. Mm, there you go. It's lovely. Since that this is the base color, right? Or is it the or is it the other one? Hmm. No, it's the other one. 
All right, I picked the wrong one. Oops, my bad. I picked the other one. Uh, let's see, is it then this one? Yes, this one it is. All right. So now you can see if we then add the darker color towards it, it it's going to be showing. So, um, how satisfying am I with this color? Mm, that's the good question. You're not supposed to work three hours in one go, lol. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Talk about wow, a lot of the rings. A lot of the rings, a lot of wow. Hmm. Wow. Did you know actually I don't play WoW? I have played it, but I was like playing it on a pirate server for like probably a week or something and then I quit because I found like, well, if this is the representation of WoW, then don't mind me. And then I realized that even the newest WoW is actually even worse than the WoW that they had before. So it was actually, it was actually worse than the WoW they had. I have played WoW, don't get me wrong, but I have played WoW in such a way that um, oh, look at that, I can actually do this it actually creates more cool effects nice that's really cool that's really cool, that's 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 really amazing that I can do this and then, you know, get get forward with the coloring but we need to get towards the darker colors. Darker. But yeah, um, I have played WoW, but I was like, I was not very interesting in the whole WoW thing, actually. I actually switched to another one because I was very unfond of subscription based um, MORPGs. So I switched to. Uh, what was it again? Uh, Guild Wars 1. I have played that for like five years or something. And then eventually I quit because. Well, you know, Guild Wars 2 came along, around, and then Guild Wars 2 was a big giant letdown, for me at least. And, uh, uh, yeah, that changed a lot of things. That really changed a lot of things. For me at least. For me at least. And uh, then I switched to just playing Dota. So I went from WoW to Guild Wars to Dota. And once I played Dota for way too long, I did do other things like playing strategy games and I always have drawn. I always have drawn. Regardless of what I was doing or where I was or what I was doing, like I went on vacation. I always drew. I not not drawing digitally of course, but drawing handfully. And now that I can draw digitally it even is more fun to draw it handfully and then go to digitally, but it's even better to go from digitally to better digitally. That's actually my favorite kind of things to do or uh, uh, discover, you know, being able to draw and then go even further than where I was before. It's also great to see that I can now just get this all... Oh, this feels so satisfying. To draw these lines into the draw into the carving wood to create this effect, and I have not even touched the lighting part of it. I played loud for a character creation game. I uh, pretty made characters and then ground up pretty outfits, and that was about it. Yeah, yeah, I did that. What I did, I made silly builds in World uh, in Guild Wars. It was amazing. Like, I wanted to make a tank that could not die, and then I figured out how to do it. And then I wanted to be like, well, because I can do it in PvP, can I also do it in PvE? And then I was like, yes, I can, and I'm, I'm alright. So I played the game for five years just to get everything to get myself that lovely build. I was like, you hit me, I hit you, I won't die, and I say you boo-hoo-hoo. So yeah, it was a it was a CC build to Oblivion. It was like, oh no, you're blinded, but you attack me anyway. Take here, take additional damage. <laughs> and then continuously doing that, and then removing all my buffs to deal more damage, and then do it again, and then debuff again, and 
it's, it was amazing. Also, they had with the also they had with the uh, Guild Wars one they had like a Pokemon system where you need to uh, if you have collected all the pets you will gain a special rewards and stuff. That was amazing. Like you had different pets, like you had a warthog, a flamingo, you had like birds, you had bears, wolves, all that, all that lovely stuff. And I must really say I'm very fond of what what they had in that game for that time. It felt it felt like it felt like you know a very cool game. It felt the atmosphere was just right. And then you know they. Uh, then Guild Wars 2 came out and I was like, oh no, I'm so excited about this. And then everything went like, this is not Guild Wars. And then I was like, well, time to quit that game. And uh, I put it on a back burner. I put it on a back burner. And then I realized I forgot the password to Guild Wars 1 and I was like very sad. <sighs> That's why I rebought it, actually. Just to play it again. Sometimes, two times. Because it's a very fun game to play. And, um, yeah, uh, things like Supreme Commander is also very fun to play. It's a strategic game where you can just build your big giant army and beat people up with robots and nukes and uh, destroy the Geneva Convention. But, uh, yeah, games are always my favorite. And one of my favorite is always Keep to Be, is always like, you know, Impossible Creatures. It's one of my favorite games. Why? Because it has so much customization in it. Like you can build your own army, and you can name them your you can name them the most offensive way you can possibly say. Like you know you can put all the words in that you want. It is like press freedom to the max. And I really like that. I really like it that you can just name everything silly. Like you know, silly Billy or Mary Carey or Barbara the Barbarian. You know those things are great great names by the way. Great names, and of course Larry and Big Boy Steve. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite names to go for. Also, Hank is one of my favorite names to go for. <laughs> but yeah, dress up with with Wow. That's actually a smart move. You know, just you know, just play the game for the outfits. Me, it's it's fun to find everything. I tried Guild Wars too. I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the mess, but. One fun class wasn't enough to keep me playing, yeah. With me it was actually the system differences, because in Guild Wars 2 it feels very generic. You have like a switch weapons and then that's actually it. So you have like multiple builds that are locked with weapons. So if you don't like a style of a weapon, then well, you know, you need to play the class with another type of weapon. While in Guild Wars 1 it's like... All right, what do I want to do? Um, I want to be a necromancer, but I also want to use a pet. Well, congratulations, you can do that. Or I'm like, well, I want to be a, I want to be a javelin throwing, burning, a uh, burning spear kind of guy that throws poisonous javelins at them that are also burning, and also blind people and also cripple, cripple people. And it's like, hmm, that's actually quite a good idea, and. That's exactly what you could do with that game. You could literally just build a build that was around, you know, being cool and stuff. Like, you could make a guy, a monk, that was also uh, elemental, uh, elementalist. And I'm like, wow, that's actually quite cool. Or you could make a monk assassin. And you could uh, teleport around the map and be like, Whoa! and then, you know, everybody else is going to be like, oh no, it's the assassin monk. Or you could play Avatar if you want to. But uh, yeah, you had also like different kind of cool things with the Mesmer. Like um, you could combine the Mesmer with a warrior. You could combine Mesmer with um, with a ranger. You could do that. Feel free to do it. There are like infinite amount of useful builds. And if you know you don't want to play with te if you don't want to play with teammates, well. There was this thing that was called, you know, henchmen, and you know, henchmen's are great. Well, it was too expensive to get uh, g uh, get into without the feeling of buy remorse. Yep, fifteen dollars to um, 
to pay up every every month is like ooh, it's that's that's very scary. I don't even buy. I don't even. Uh, I don't even. I don't even have fifteen. I don't even have uh, a spare fifteen dollars. I won't even spare fifteen dollars for it. Like, if it was a one-time buy, I would. I would have buy. I would have bought it. But I would have been disappointed right now in the state it is, because everything is like a cash grab, uh, free-to-play kind of game, which is like really bad. It doesn't feel right, and with. Guild Wars 2, it, yeah, Guild Wars 2 has the same issue, but of course they do it because they want to have the um, player, uh, they want to have the servers up and running. But in Guild Wars 1, it was no pressure. There was no, there was, there was a shop, but the shop was separate from the game, which is very important. If you have a shop and you have separate shop from the game, then it's much better. And everything you could have, everything you could earn, everything you could trade, everything you could make, and that is also great. Also, you could play Guild Wars 1, you could just play it solo, which is amazing. You could just play it without any anybody, you could just use some henchmen to deal with uh, everything you do. Like, oh no, I have this horrible boss fight, allow me to just use henchmen. And then you have these secondary henchmen that are actually heroes so they're actually player characters but they are not players they are just you know your CPU kind of guys and you could fully customize them as well so you could you could make your own damn uber healer or very strong elementalist without you know using the power of uh, without using the power of inviting people to your party <laughs> so yeah um, the power of not inviting, uh, but the power of playing online offline is really cool. And that's the thing that, you know, wow, it's like, you're forced to do this. You could not play dungeons without, without you know, using other people. You could not solo it. Uh, well, you could, but, you know, it takes a long time. Well, in the Guild Wars 1, it was like, ah, well, no problems whatsoever. Wh why not? And, yeah. For twenty five dollars, it's like the dirtiest, cheapest game ever, because it's free forever, and it's still running up today. <laughs> so a game that is like almost eleven years old, it's like yeah, it aged well. It aged well. If you if you look if you look at WoW, if you look at WoW and you think like wow, that's actually a quite and cool and impressive game. Well, better look up Guild Wars One then instead because that actually has better graphics. And it's made in the same in the same build here, if I'm correct. And it's far different. It feels far different. Far more different. The only downside is it has no jump button. Well it has a jump command, but it has no jump button. So yeah, if you ever if you ever wonder if you could jump in the map, well no, you can't. Too bad. Too sad. You're stuck on the ground. Unless you get knocked down. <laughs> but yeah, the game was awesome. The game was great. Oh yes, very spooky already. I like this tree. I like this tree a lot. How much time has passed? Uh, Thirty-five minutes. Well, what? Uh, let's see. Thirty, forty, fifty-three minutes. All right, I will. I will just do this, and then I'm just gonna show you. So, yesterday I was working on that drawing. And uh, today I actually finished it. So uh, allow me to explain what I mean. So I also fixed the, <laughs> I also fixed the uh, part right here, this part. But the all right. So um, allow me to show you what I mean. So this is the drawing that I drew. And you can already see that I did the lens flare. So this is actually, you know, um, how uh, the idea was like, it gives the effect of, you know, looking through his telescope. Of course, you know, um, the crocodile represents the uh, company I have been working on the travels with. And the globe uh, is, of course, the traveling. And the joke was the rice. The joke was the rice. So we have rice and... You know, there is no meat in it, so that's a shame. You know, that's a real shame. And that's what, what the crocodile says, like, you know, rice without meat? Huh, I'm not going to be eating that. 
and uh, the eye catching the eye ca the eye catching parts here are actually the uh, stars on the side, which uh, Im uh, amplifies the effect of the of the uh, lens. So the lens actually t you feel like you're getting sucked into it. You 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 instantly focus on the part that you need to look at. And the lens flare gives this effect on the drawing that it feels like yeah you're zoomed in on this on this thing. So one of the parts that here that are here eye catching is the uh, rice bottle. The rice bottle is very eye catching because of uh, how it's represented, and also the crocodile itself actually is stands out from the background, and therefore you know it is an eye catch. So is the white uh, board that represents the um, uh, writing on it, the writing on it, which is also important. So that is actually exactly how I did it, and within within a within a day, I figured out like, oh well, I I can do this and that and this, but it took me almost two two hours to figure out like, how the hell do I get from point A to point B? Because that's the main problem. How do I get from point A to point B? Well, that's a good point. Like, for instance, what I use this as a reference because it's a very good reference to go for. So this was the reference, all right? This was the reference to get uh, the art style I'm using from this art style to this art style. It's the same art style. But how do I get this kind of art style right here? Well, I wanted to, to give that same art style the same feeling. The main problem is that I should then include these kind of taxes, texts in there, and I should have used uh, some kind of uh, some kind of effects. So that's what I went for. I went for a kind of effect in the background. I used the bottles that I use normally use the buttons in the background, and I used, uh, but I didn't use it. I didn't use the uh, the screen. Why? Because I actually needed that. I needed to actually have a sign because that was the original design. The only downside is that now the design actually doesn't catch up with the design that I'm using right here. But it does look nice and pretty. It does still keep a little bit of the design. It should be. I should have used maybe a second layer uh, on the on the next on the on the mid. Uh, in front of it, so I should go for like uh, white with uh, a gray uh, side part, and that should have worked better. But for the rest, I kept the style the same, which is important. That's important. The same for the Morfog. I used all the same styles in the in the in the stones, as in the grass, as in the bloody dam uh, tree uh, tree uh, tree trunks, because you know it's very important to keep all the style the same. The style is heavily detailed with uh, with heavy detail in it, and that's important because if you if you fall then out of that style, then things you you cannot recover from the part that you had before. Anyway, um, I'm gonna be saving this bad boy up because this thing needs to be saved, and I will call it a day. Yes, I will call it a day for today. I um I hope you all have enjoyed for today and uh, thanks all for watching and I hope I'll see you all next time. Until then, I wish you all a lovely day. Bye.